Today we're making brown chicken stock. Brown stock is made out of roasted chicken. It is brown in color and has a deep meaty flavor. Blonde stock is made out of raw chicken. It is clear in color and has a mild clean flavor. Both stocks are wonderful and make excellent soups, but when it comes to pan sauces, a brown chicken stock is more versatile. A blonde chicken stock will serve you well for deglazing a pan after chicken dishes. But a brown chicken stock will be a great companion to chicken, duck, beef, lamb, pork, and even game. Let me show you a difference between a stock you can buy at the store and the real deal. Here is my homemade stock reduced six times. It is like jello and gives my sauces fabulous body. Here is 365 brand stock from Whole Foods reduced six times. It is still liquid and tastes sickeningly sweet and salty. I did start with low sodium stock, but after sufficient reduction, even that becomes too salty. And even if you find the salt-free stock, you're still stuck with the fact that it has no body. So don't let the words like organic, free range, and low sodium fool you. You'll spend as much time making one quart of stock as four quarts of stock, so you might just as well make as much as possible and freeze it. I use an 8-quart pot. Choose a pot that's on the tall side to avoid too much evaporation. Lucky for us, Whole Foods sells salt-free rotisserie chickens and that's what we'll use to make our stock, saving us a ton of time and cleanup. The chicken needs to be salt-free, otherwise your stock will be too salty after you reduce it. Break it all up into parts and put into your pot. We'll need two chickens for an 8-quart pot. During the cooking time, the collagen from the connective tissue will convert to gelatin, giving our stock that awesome body. All parts of the chicken are loaded with collagen except for the breasts. If you can find another use for the breasts, save them. I find that the breasts from store-bought rotisserie chickens are too dry to use for salads and sandwiches, so I put them in my stock. But if you roast your own parts for stock, only use legs, wings, and backs. And of course, don't forget to add all the jelly from the bottom of the container. That's stock right there. See the amount of meat? That's the difference between your stock and store-bought junk. Fill your pot with water to cover the chicken by 2 to 3 inches. Cover the pot and set over high heat. Bring it almost to a boil, but not quite to avoid a boil over and a big mess. Finish bringing the stock to a boil without a lid. As soon as the water boils, turn down the heat to low. You'll see some foam rise to the top. If the chicken were raw, the amount of foam would be huge and you'll need to spend 30 minutes or so carefully skimming it. But since the chicken was already cooked, the amount of foam will be minimal. I like to push all the foam to one side and then lift it up with a spoon into a bowl of water. This cleans my spoon to make my skimming more efficient. Now it's time to add our veggies. We'll use large chunks of carrots, celery and onion. Other good aromatics are fresh thyme, bay leaf and whole peppercorns. Add them to the pot and push down with a spoon to submerge. Now the stock is on autopilot. It should simmer uncovered very gently for 3-5 to five hours, but will not need any stirring or supervision. The reason we keep it on such low simmer is to keep the stock clear. If you crank up the heat, the turbulence will break up coagulated pieces of protein and blood to such small bits they'll be completely integrated into the liquid and will be impossible to strain out, giving you a muddy stock. It's been four hours. I'm back from the gym and conveniently our stock is done. Let's set a colander over a large bowl and strain the stock. I prefer to use a ladle instead of dumping the whole pot into the colander. It might take a few more minutes, but it will save me from being splattered head to toe. Once you drain all the stock out of the colander, you can discard the chicken. At this point, I suggest you leave your stock alone for 15 minutes to let little impurities settle to the bottom. An 8-quart pot produces about 4 quarts of stock, so I'll strain it the second time through a fine mesh strainer into a 4-quart pot. Pour very slowly, not to disturb those impurities on the bottom of the pot. A 
coffee filter or paper towel would catch them, but that will make straining the stock extremely slow, so I prefer to simply pour carefully. See? There they are. Now we need to cool our stock to room temperature and refrigerate it overnight. Never ever put a big pot of hot stock into your fridge. This will raise the temperature of the whole fridge, compromising all your other food. To speed up the cooling process, you can take your pot of stock and put it into a clean sink filled with ice water. After sitting in the fridge overnight, the fat will become a lot easier to skim. Gently push it to one side and lift it off. If you have a fine mesh skimmer, it makes getting rid of tiny leftover bits of fat a bit easier. Congratulations! Your stock is ready to use. You can keep it in the fridge for about a week or freeze it, but I prefer to reduce it before storage. Set the pot over high heat and boil uncovered until it's reduced to your liking. I usually go for four times. Now that all the chicken is out, there is no need to simmer it gently and you can crank up the heat. Here it is after one hour and here it is after an additional 45 minutes. I lost track of time and I think the stack is probably reduced about six times rather than four, but that's fine. I can always add a bit more water when using it. Cool till warm, but not cold to prevent it from solidifying. And divide between containers. See how compactly I can store it? If I need it for a soup, I can reconstitute it with water. And if I need it for a sauce, it's already reduced. Put it in the fridge until it's solid. Cover and label. Brown chicken stock, reduced six times, and the date. You can freeze your stock indefinitely and use it straight from the freezer. For more classic techniques, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes. And we can make stock together.